Caddis Maximus here. This time, this is a quick review. I'm not recommending this. This was a promotional product. I'd actually done a video maybe a week ago about the annual cutters, which seemed okay. And uh, those are special, like, combination hole saw uh, milling cutters that are used in magnetic drills. Don't recommend this. You'll see in a minute here, but it has a variety of wiring issues. It doesn't have a lockout, so you can actually turn on the motor and uh, attempt to drill when the magnet's not turned on, causing a dangerous situation. Professional models have a lockout. You can't attempt to drill if the magnet's not turned on. The electromagnet light's actually just a power light. I'll show that in a second. Let me also show uh, the runout, which is a big deal. Um, the bit actually wobbles around a bit too much. So here's the really the big issue is just that it's just poor machining, poor grinding in the bore. We can see how much this cutter wants to wobble around in there, and that's really the crux of the issue. So if we get it in there, tighten it up on the flats, it causes the cutter to want to canter over. So I'm going to torque this down. And after working with Haugen's and others, let me get a little better view of cutter itself. So even though that doesn't look like that much wobble, it's actually pretty significant. I've used Milwaukee's, I've used Haugen's, and they're really on it. And the problem with that, with the having no capacitor with the electromagnet, so it's actually pulsing on and off, they're just relying on the residual inductance. When this cutter is wobbling back and forth, the bottom edge is actually tilting ever so slightly. So what happens is you make contact with the material and it will just grab on one edge of the cutter to the other rather than being totally even. And that'll cause it to grab and cause the drill to shift. And uh, that's an issue. And it's the reason I say you just can't really get cheap versions of these. Other safety issues, you can see that this says electromagnet but it's just on all the time. It just lets you know that it's plugged in, so it's uh, grossly mislabeled. The other issue, which is also a safety um, concern, is on professional mag drills. I say professional ones because this is not. There's a cutout. So if you try to turn on the motor and the electromagnet's not turned on, it won't work. It will. The motor will only turn on with the electromagnet. But on this one, you can be in a situation where you forget and turn on the motor and start drilling and then the whole base can swing around and could be a real dangerous situation and that's really unfortunate so anyway that was the issue I actually do have the inline oiler for this I took it off so I could do some measurements the, uh, the other issue with this thing was the fact that um, it weighs like 40 pounds, 45 pounds or something, 20 kilograms. And it was just in a cardboard box with just two thin sandwich pieces of styrofoam, molded styrofoam. And it beat up the styrofoam, crushing the oil. Because as soon as the six crop dropped a couple times, being so heavy, it just breaks up the styrofoam. And then it's basically kind of floating around in the box along with pieces of styrofoam. Somehow the motor wire got caught up with the oil tank and some edge of it and it ended up getting cut. So I replaced the motor wire. Then that's when I started to try to use it and saw that the spindle had so much run out. The other issue is, is Viver online is this is their big two inch unit, two inch rated. They're rating it, they advertise zero to 300 RPM when this is actually 300 to 550 RPM. So it's completely mislabeled. Uh, and it's really unfortunate. And another issue is something that you could fix, but when you go up and down, the the parallelism of the ways 
it's not perfect to the bottom of the magnet so it's kind of drilling off at an angle like this which is it's something you can fix but it would take an effort because you would have to unscrew the ways and use you know thin feeler pieces of feeler gauge maybe thousandths or even half thousandths down at the bottom or you know at the top depending on where it's at to shim up the gibbs the ways so that it actually runs parallel that was a big issue it does have tensioning screws but these were all just loose when i got it and i had to lock those all down these are tension screws so when you you loosen uh the bolts on the way or on the I guess it's not the gib, the gib's here on the way so you can get them in and out so you can main, make sure it stays tight. And it's just unfortunate for 300 bucks, uh, you thought maybe you could get a good deal, but you can't. And there's absolutely no parts available. If any part of this breaks, the magnet fails, spindle, anything, you just can't get any parts whatsoever for it. So anyway, I'm going to cut this video short. There's nothing really to talk about besides... Um, if you're going to buy a $300 mag drill or cheaper, uh, it's just going to be pretty much garbage and may not even do the work you need to do. And it's going to actually be a safety concern. There's a reason these tools are so expensive from Milwaukee or Haugen, um, easily reaching into, you know, I mean, get a used Haugen, get a used Milwaukee and just spend the three to $500 on one of those because you're going to be much better off. Uh, than trying to get one of these Chinese ones because they're just going to be horrid. And once again, there's a reason why mag drills, professional grade ones, easily jump into thousands or even several thousand dollars, depending on the models you get, is because there's just a lot of machine work between all the machining on the magnet and the ways and the, the guide and the quality of the motor itself and the wiring and electronics. There's just a whole lot to these machines. And it's why they're not really, you know homeowner type stuff because unless you're really into it these are commercial tools used on shipyards and uh, bridge construction all that kind of stuff and so they're built to be accurate and it's unfortunate you know even with these Chinese ones they should not have tried to hit such a low budget target they should have simply chart made this like a $500 unit $600 unit and put more effort into the machine work the wiring and the quality control of the units because you can't have bits wobble around you can't uh, it's really dangerous not to have a lockout with the electromagnet it does happen you don't have that lockout and you just forget that one time you go to engage and this whole body just comes swinging around and uh pretty violently and it can fall on you you know if this was on a surface and fell off a welding table on your foot if you weren't wearing steel toe boots it'd break your toes it'd break the bridge of your foot um and it's just don't get these just avoid chinese mag drills you're just uh playing with fire anyway really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing if you haven't subscribed please do Till next time cadis maximus out